7 News with Mike Smithson. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of 7 News on what's been a devastating day for South Australia. As we go to air tonight, the state is in the grip of a bushfire emergency. Several fires are burning out of control, the most serious here in the Adelaide Hills on the city's doorstep. So far across South Australia, one person has died, another is missing and several properties have been destroyed. Seven emergency service workers are amongst the injured. All this on a day of record heat that's pushed emergency services to the limit. Tonight we have reporters right across Adelaide to bring us the latest. Elspeth Hussey begins our extensive coverage. Uncontained, unpredictable and on our doorstep, a wild inferno in the Adelaide Hills. We're broadcasting live from Balhanna CFS where you can see the fire effort is being coordinated from. And in breaking news, we cross to Mark Mooney at Woodside and Mark, the fire is causing havoc there. Yeah, it certainly is, Mike. Uh, we are on Bird in Hand Road, about seven kilometres east of Woodside. And as you can see, uh, these properties didn't stand a chance. Thanks for that, Mark. Now, one of the towns under immediate threat is Mount Torrens. Andrea Nicholas is there. And Andrea, what's the latest? Well, Mike, the situation has just got really serious here. Thanks, Andrea. An evacuation centre is being set up tonight for those who can't return home. Peter Caldercott is there and, uh, Pete, it must be an anxious wait for everyone there. That's for sure, Mike. This recreation centre on Lower North East Road at Highbury is set up for those who have nowhere to go. Thanks, Pete. Uh, now for the latest on that cool change which is sweeping the state. Gertie Spurling joins us. And Gertie, the gusty winds on the fire ground, they could still create some problems tonight. Mike, the cool change and the humidity has created very unpredictable fire conditions. Now to Deanna Williams and Dee, this must be putting a huge strain on our hospital system. Yes, it is, Mike. This extreme heat has forced hospitals to cancel all elective surgery. Thanks, Dee, for that. Uh, now we're just hoping that the statistics aren't added to, but with many hills towns directly in the line of fire, uh, those statistics, well, we just have to wait and see. We'll stay here for see what happens, what develops during the evening. Now it's back to Jess Adamson in the studio for the rest of the day's stories. Thanks, Mike. What a day, and it's not over yet. We'll talk to you later in the bulletin. A Kangaroo Island farmer and firefighter has dropped a bombshell claim that he could have prevented the devastating bushfire. Dave Halloran says red tape and bureaucracy stood in the way of him snuffing out flames before they took hold. These images will haunt us forever. For veteran KI farmer Dave Halloran, it's a mixture of immense sadness and anger. There's all these people there that have lost everything and that's really bad stuff. Dave has been an official aerial fire spotter. He also owns heavy equipment used to cut crucial fire breaks. We get the red tape and we can't go in there to do it. That's because strict laws prevent him from clearing vegetation in national parks without permission. On December 30, a catastrophic day, he was in the air by dawn with a local CFS chief after being alerted to an emerging fire triggered by lightning at Flinders Chase. Burning about as big as a football oval in light vegetation. He says he asked the CFS for permission to create a fire break, but there was no response and it took almost three hours for water bombers to arrive. You've got a very small window in the morning. He and others had bulldozers on standby to flatten combustible undergrowth and clear a path in. If you can keep on the flank of any fire, it stops it growing outwards, then you can deal with the front. By the time uh, they say we, we've got to get permission from Adelaide or whatever, you can't wait till midday. It could have been avoided, do you think? Oh, of course it can. All this can be avoided. I would say I'd be 95% sure that I could have, with one to two days, has gone in and got around this particular fire. So this is a stuff up. That's the word. The government knows full well the high level of anger here and it also knows that it's never had a better opportunity to bring about urgent change. I certainly respect the knowledge and understanding of those people who are on the ground. Of course, uh, there are a lot of ideas, there are a lot of views, uh, we welcome them all, 
But the CFS says there was no formal approach from Mr Halloran and it had skilled experts on the ground. It's hoped the current independent review will shed new light and prevent history from repeating itself. Mike Smithson, 7 News. And Mike joins us now with developments from police headquarters. What is it, Mike? Well, Jane, the Major Crime Squad has already taken an interest in Dave Halloran's claims. Detectives will be interviewing him and compiling a brief for the coroner into the horrible events that led to the deaths of two men. And that inquest might also come down hard on measures which were either ignored or brushed aside. So it seems that Mr Halloran's information may become crucial as this investigation continues. Good evening. A young Adelaide family stranded in the Philippines under a strict COVID-19 lockdown hold grave fears for their safety. After following the government's travel advice, they're now pleading for help to get home as the country's president threatens to use deadly force on the streets. Cebu in the southern Philippines, it's an island paradise. But the Digant's family's dream holiday here has become a living nightmare. No, we're very scared and we're very stressed and we're worried about the family at home, worrying about us. Sophia and Nathan arrived in early March with their children Siri and George. Five days later, Manila was thrown into a month-long COVID-19 lockdown. <laughs> The president urging police and the military to do whatever it takes to keep people off the streets. Shoot them dead. Yeah, that's the big fear at the moment, being stuck out on the street. After cancelling a family reunion, they booked the first flight home, even before Scott Morrison urged Aussies abroad to return. But the flight was cancelled and a string of others in weeks since have suffered the same fate. We've been actively trying to get home since the 15th of March, every single day. On the phone, hours and hours at a time. Yeah, we've booked that many flights home. We spent you know, tens of thousands on the flights to get home. An intensive care nurse at Flinders, Sophia, knows the coronavirus risks. Her family's now in isolation of sorts, the only guests left at their resort, which says they'll have to move out within a week. We have no end point to this. Back home in Adelaide, Sophia's parents feel helpless and scared. You know, we really fear for the children and their safety and their health if they can't stay where they are. So. It's really desperate now. The federal government's attempting to get all stranded Aussies home, but Sophia and Nathan are now terrified that they're just two small voices falling through the cracks. And we're desperate now. We're just, we've become really, really desperate for help. We need help. We need to bring them all home. They all need help, not just our families. Mike Smithson, 7 News.